Hello AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here. We're going to take a look at example three here from topic 9-7. We're still converting. This time we're going to go from rectangular to polar coordinates. So hopefully you've been following along with this video series because it makes a lot more sense when you kind of watch them sequentially. So rectangular coordinates is where we start. Polar coordinates is where we're going to finish. So in order to do that, we will now rely on our trusty right box here and that has a couple of different kind of variations on our formulas and it says the polar coordinate r comma theta of a point named by the rectangular coordinates x y can be found by the following formulas now the fact that r is the square root of x squared plus y squared should not be very difficult to see because if you have a standard right triangle here the Pythagorean theorem is going to dictate that r would indeed be the square root of x squared plus y squared so that part makes sense it's usually the angle part that bothers some students and that is simply saying that the inverse tangent of y over x is equal to that theta well, that's not too terribly difficult to see if you were to think of it like this. The tangent of that theta is y over x, so why wouldn't the theta be the inverse tangent? Because we're just basically isolating on that particular theta, and boom, there we go. But the tricky part is what I have outlined here in green. This is the part that really tends to bother students at times. And it says, if you have an x-coordinate that was negative, well, what does that look like? An x-coordinate that's negative. Well, that means that you're living over here in either quadrant number 2 or 3. That's no good. And the reason it's no good is that when you transfer this into polar, you have to be over in this area because in polar, we go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 in that region, and that happens to be the domain restriction set upon tangent in order for it to have an inverse. And if that's a little bit hard to understand, maybe you could uh, scour YouTube, scour the internet, and find some um, videos that talk about the inverse tangent. Not so much its calculus applications, but its straight trigonometric meaning, and then you could get a better understanding of that. So just kind of remember, if x is always going to be less than zero, add pi to the result of your uh, theta value that you get. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of examples here. We're first of all going to convert the rectangular point 3, negative 3. So we're going to go ahead and jump in and find R first. I always think it's easier to find R first to kind of get your warmed up and, and everything all flowing well because the theta is typically going to be the one that's a little tougher. But it really doesn't matter which one you do first. So we're going to take the X and plug it in. We're going to take the Y and plug it into our formula. And we end up having the square root of 9 plus 9, which is just the square root of 18. And of course, we are uh, allowed to re reduce that and simplify to a nicer form, say 3 root 2. So R is done. R is finished. Now for theta. Theta is defined to be the arc tangent. And if anybody's wondering, you know, why is there capital A's here in this form of the arc tangent? I think that's a way of me uh, of saying I want this principal arc tangent. In other words, I really want to adhere to the restrictions that are set upon the tangent function in order for it to have an inverse. OK, um, I won't use that convention as I'm solving the rest of these problems. Arc tangent of negative one. That's what we're looking for. So you have to be thinking arc tangent of negative 1. When does that happen? And I will tell you that happens at negative pi over 4. Now you might think, well, arc tangent of 1, that's pi over 4. Well, yes, your arc tangent of negative 1 is going to have that symmetric relationship. And we're going to get this negative pi over 4. And again, if that's something that bothers you, it's, it's not a, a calc thing that's the issue. It's just some things that you may have forgotten in your trig class. I'm sure you learned them, but time goes by and things tend to be forgotten. So f definitely f uh, just take five, 10 minutes and seek out some wonderful videos that will help you with this arc tangent idea. I also want to make sure that it's uh, readily known by all that you could express this point a little differently. Negative pi over 4 
is the same as 5 pi over 4. We talked a little bit about that in our previous video. And so if this is a multiple choice question, you've got to be on your toes because either one of these would be uh, deemed acceptable. Let's go ahead and take a look at part B. We're going to find our R by taking the square root of. If you want to go ahead and pause the video here, I certainly would welcome it. And you could see if you can solve this for R and theta and check our answers. When I square each of these, it's going to look a little something like this initially. And then once we do the work, negative 4 squared is 16, 4 root 3 squared. Now that would be a 16 times 3, which is 48. And it turns out this is such a wonderful number. It's 64, isn't it? Which is indeed a perfect square. So we'll take that any day of the week. Now for our theta value, we're going to take the arctan of, and again, we take the y divided by x, so 4 root 3, over negative 4, and I'm going to go ahead and make note of the fact that x is negative here. It was not in part a, but it is negative in part b, so I need to add the pi. Why do I add the pi one more time? Is that's going to take you that 180 degrees the other direction to put you in quadrant 2 if you were in 4 to begin, or it's going to take you that 180 degrees over to take you from quadrant uh, 2 to quadrant 4. I don't know if I said that correctly. Taken from quadrant 3 to quadrant 1, or you're taking yourself from quadrant 2 to quadrant 4. In any event, you want to land in quadrants 1 and 4. Now, in this particular problem, I basically have the arctan of what looks to be negative square root of 3 here. And so you have to think about that just a little bit. If you need to draw a triangle to kind of get the juices flowing, that's perfectly okay. I do know that a, an angle measure that has a tangent of radical 3 over 1 would look something like this. I know that this, uh, whoops, that side there is 1. I know the hypotenuse would be 2 if I needed it. But this helps me in determining that that angle is going to be a 60 degree angle or pi over 3. Now the issue that we've got is that our value was negative root 3, which just simply means that I am at negative pi over 3. Now once I add pi to that, that's going to give me a 2 pi over 3, positive 2 pi over 3. And that's the, the, uh, the theta that I want to pair up with my 8. Now, a great way to check this is you kind of have a basic understanding, hopefully, of what quadrant the point negative 4, comma 4 root 3 would be in. If you just use a little bit of thinking, you don't necessarily have to graph it. But that point is in quadrant number 2, I believe. Well, you want to make sure that you have the same location for this particular point as well. And we know that that 2 pi over 3 angle measure is going to put us in that quadrant 2, and then we're just going to go out 8 units, 8 concentric circles from the, the pole. There's your example 3, converting rectangular to polar. Thanks for joining us. Keep watching.